Archaeologists stunned by a bizarre find at ancient Petra in Jordan, between uh, the uh, border of Israel and Jordan. They said, this does not belong here. They were stunned, astonished to find white sandstone in the ancient city of Petra. It's a region filled exclusively with red sandstone, a discovery that could flip the metropolis decline on its head. Petra is the lost Middle Eastern civilization that has stunned archaeologists for decades. It was once the center of the world, the hub of politics, culture, finance, and trade, when the Silk Road, the passage which connected the East and the West worlds, was in its infancy, Petra acted as a stop-off for merchants and travelers making their way along the myriad networks. Now, from what the past articles I read, basically they would travel all day and rest at night and rest their animals, leave the next morning, and there were uh, little cities or towns on the Silk Road about every 20 or 30 kilometers. Now, it was funded, founded by the Nabataeans, an ancient Arab people who lived in what is today southwestern Jordan. They amassed enormous amounts of wealth, something which stirred the jealousy of the neighboring Greeks and Roman empires. And while the Greeks failed in their attempts to siege the city in 312 BC, that's just after Alexander the Great, the Romans succeeded and captured Petra in 106 AD. It was annexed and renamed Arabia Petraea, and the Romans ruled over the city for the next 250 years. But in the 4th century AD, a freak earthquake raised the city to the ground. And that's the big earthquake that destroyed a lot of the um, ancient temples in that area. Okay, about 350, 360 AD. So combined with emerging sea trading routes with was soon thought to be the nail in the coffin for Petra as modern city and it quickly fell into disrepair. The Byzantine Empire attempted to reinvigorate Petra and erected a handful of churches in the city limits, but nothing saved it, and the great stone palaces carved into the valley soon became no more than shelters for wandering shepherds. Actually, they weren't palaces, they were, uh, it's a necropolis, it was basically a cemetery. Now, while it's unclear whether the earthquake specifically caused Petra's demise, archaeologist Dr. Tom Paradise believed that some form of catastrophe resulted in its fall. The researcher, who was working for many years in Petra, spoke during the Smithsonian Channel's documentary, Secrets, Riddle of Petra, and investigating Petra's main colonnade street in 2017, Dr. Paradise and his team came across something bizarre, and it puzzled him. He said, what they uncovered were massive beds of very white sandstone. He picked up one of the red bricks, which are native to Petra, and he noted, this is much more characteristic of the lower part of the valley. Yet picking up another piece of stone, this time it was white, and near enough in the same place as the red sandstone, Dr. Paradise said, this characteristic white sandstone does not belong here. Given that Petra sits in a red sandstone basin, Dr. Paradise and his team began investigating how the white stone may have ended up where it was. So to do this, they scanned the entirety of the city, searching for clues, perhaps signs of avalanches that may have brought in white sandstone from outside hundreds of years ago. And he said, we realized it had the particle size, the color texture, everything the same as the sandstone that we see across the valley and over the top of the hill. This started a longer inquiry that would lead us to, the, to conclude that Petra may have literally been hit by a massive, massive flood. References to Petra only emerged after the Romans took the city, its story told by the invading forces. We know from history that the city has been regularly hit by torrential rains and flooding, explaining why it's, it is filled with terracotta plumbing and an extraordinary advanced drainage system. While its flood defenses largely kept the city safe, in 1963, they succumbed to the heavy downpours that killed 22 tourists. The Nabataeans were aware of the possibilities of such disasters, and so they created a series of tunnels and offshoots to control ex excess surface water coming in. The SIQ, S -I -Q, 
Petra's main entrance was vital to the city and it was the main connection to the outside world. Dr. Paradise explained what was actually a brilliant plan was that the tunnel was created to divert the water from the main seek. So the primary corridor to the main city would have been kept free of water during episodic, episodic rains. And while it appeared like foolproof engineering, Dr. Paradise and, and his team found evidence that at one point, water was massively backing up, unable to drain away near Petra's entrance. He said the far side of the channel is completely scoured clean, so the water would have been rushing down the channel. It's backed up by the obstruction in the tunnel, so it's rising to the point where it starts to scour the side walls and then literally tops the bank way up there and you can see where it's rounded. We're looking at five, six, seven meters of flood water just at that point and that would have been an extraordinary amount of water. If this theory is correct, flood water would have eventually burst through the city gates and onto the streets bringing with it up to 16 feet of sand and debris. And it's impossible to know whether this is the case. However, Dr. Paradise and his team continued to carry out research in and around the city. Petra was eventually abandoned for good in the 8th century AD. While nomads and shepherds used the buildings for shelter and safety, no one else is thought to have come across the ancient city. It was not until Swiss explorer Johann Ludwig Bruckhardt set off and stumbled across the lost metropolis in 1812, at the Western, as that the Western world became aware of the ancient advanced civilization. And bringing news of it back to Europe, travelers, adventurers, archaeologists set out to see Petra for themselves, and it has since become a huge attraction for researchers and tourists alike. So that seems to be why it, it found its demise and uh, was uh, disbanded. The uh, flooding. This is by Joel Day on Express UK, according to Smithsonian. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Finally support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.